Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Last week we had a bit of a puzzle, because I have started to do some experiments with the IFAG skill on American light cruisers, and we've pitted off the Dallas against the Worcester, targeting a South Carolina battleship, because honestly that was what I had around at the time, but um, one thing that kind of stood out a bit weirdly was that while the Dallas was actually seeing a noticeable improvement from the IFAG skill, the Worcester was not. So how come that a tier 6 ship actually benefits from better AG penetration, where a tier 10 ship does not? Well, I think I have a relatively decent explanation to, uh, right now, and I think it's interesting for a lot of reasons, and we'll be getting into that a little bit. So, to understand... To understand how this works, we're going to have to first understand what our target is. A South Carolina class battleship is actually reasonably well armored for a tier 3 battleship. Uh, she has 305mm on the main belt, so that would be kind of probably the section between the, the first and the last turret. And you can almost see it here, I'm not sure if the model, yeah, the visual model actually corresponds to the armor model. But you can kind of see here that big plating on the side, that thick set of, 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 of armor plating. So that's about 305 millimeter thick. The, uh, the bow and stern section, so everything after the last turret and before the first turret, are thinner. They are not super thin. This is an early stage battleship, but uh, they're definitely thinner than the 305 millimeters that we have on the main belt. Uh, the the turrets themselves and the barbettes, so there's this uh, this little circle, these little round tubes that the turrets are sitting on, they are reasonably heavily armored as well, uh, except for the turret roofs. Uh, these are quite thin, and the deck itself uh, doesn't have very much armor either. On a South Carolina, it's somewhere between 25 and 64 millimeters. So why does this matter? Well, because it matters where you're going to to hit the ship to see if you can penetrate it with a 150 millimeter high explosive round. The second thing that we're going to have to look at is angles. And uh, here's a thing about perception. So let's take a very quick look. So here I am in the Worcester and uh, I'm shooting in the zoom view at maximum range. Now if you, you observe the shells actually being fired and then you see they are running a very, a very long arc and then they are eventually coming down. And it looks like the shells coming down um, is relatively well straight, right? From here, from, from where, because you are sitting on the ship that is shooting and looking far out, it looks like the shells are just dropping in from the top. Now, the thing is, that's not how shells work. And uh, the thing is that you can't see angles of the, the actual angle in which the shells drop from this perspective. Let's switch the perspective for the exact same thing. So there's the Worcester and there are the shells coming in from the other perspective. And when you see them actually splashing in, you see that the angle itself is not as steep as it looks from the perspective of the Worcester. Let's see that again. Uh, we'll not get another salvo coming in in a second. Uh, there they come. And they are splashing. Re uh, at actually a reasonably steep angle. So another thing we can do is we can actually observe this from the side. So let's turn around a little bit and then watch another salvo coming in and see it splashing in from the side such that we can observe how the angles are actually impacting. And there you see what, what looks like shells dropping like from the top is probably at best like a 30 degree angle of the water when they impact. So your shells, even in something like a Worcester, which uh, has a has like very high shell arcs and can actually fire over an island, are not dropping from the sky onto the enemy ship, but they are coming in at um, at a reasonably well at a, at a reasonably flat angle. And the reason for that is that the shells have an elliptical curve in which they f in which they fly. Right. So why is that important? Well, because that kind of defines. Well, where the shells are impacting. And uh, now let's look at another experiment that I've done with the Worcester, where I have been firing at the exact same target with the exact same setup, but from the maximum range. In the first experiment, I've been shooting from seven kilometers. 
Now I'm shooting from 11.8 kilometers. So for this experiment, I have kind of positioned myself right about at, an, at, an, at a 90 degree angle from the enemy ship, such that I actually get, you know, somewhat of a natural uh, aspect. But um, once again, look, look at these shells coming in. From my perspective, they look like they're falling from the sky. The thing is, uh, that's because my depth perspective from this angle is, is off. And they're actually coming in at a flat arc, or a reasonably flat arc. And um, they are going to impact, or some of them are going to impact the main belt. And some of them are going to impact the deck armor. The steeper the angle is, and the, uh, the easier it is to hit the deck armor. And remember what I said about the armor plating, the South Carolina has a 305 millimeter main belt. IFHE or not, the Worcester is not going to be able to penetrate the main belt of a South Carolina class battleship. It's not going to get through 305 millimeters of armor with high explosive shells. So no matter what we do, we are going to end up uh, getting semi-pens on, on the side of the ship. Whereas if we are able to hit the other parts of the ship, uh, especially the superstructure and the deck, the, uh, the Worcester shells actually are very good at penetrating. So let's have a look at the, at the data coming out of this. So first, as usual, we'll, uh, we've, we've done the same thing. I've done five battles just to, uh, compensate, for, uh, to compensate for RNG and, other uh, and just dispersion and other kinds of things. And um, uh, the, f uh, the first round is going to be done without the IFG skill. So we've done a to uh, we've done um, 211 hits, and we've done an average damage per, per shell of 347, compared to the same thing at seven kilometers, where we only did an average damage per shell of 291. So the given that the rest of the values are the same, so it's the same uh, HE alpha, it's the same effective HE alpha, or the the same effective HE, the same damage reduction. Uh, we have actually, by doubling up the distance, uh, increased the effectiveness of our HE shells by 12%. Now we're doing the exact same thing with IFHE. And at 7 kilometers, IFHE didn't make a difference. How about at 11.8 kilometers? Well, we end up with an average damage per shell of 354, which increases the effectiveness, if ever so slightly, to 75.77%, or for a grand total of uh, around about 2% damage per shell delta. So same story here. If we're shooting at extreme range, the Worcester is uh, not going to get anything out of, out of the IFAG skill. So why does this work for the Dallas but not for the Worcester? Con uh, unintuitively, it's because the Worcester has the better penetration. There are two sections here of the ship where we can penetrate and will penetrate, and where we cannot and will not penetrate, either IFHE or not. If the Worcester hits the side of the ship, and I'm not 100% sure about bow and stern section, but I'm um, pretty sure about the belt section. If the Worcester shells hit the belt section, IFHE or no IFHE, they're not going to get through. If the Worcester shells are going to hit the superstructure or the deck section, IFHE or no FHE, they will get through because the Worcester's base penetration is actually better than the Dallas's. That's why the uh, that's why the uh, the Worcester didn't get any boost in the first experiment. Now the other question you could ask: Why is the um, why is the effectiveness on the first experiment on the Worcester at seven kilometers without the IFHE or with the IFHE so much lower? Uh, why is it almost uh, exactly at the same level as the Dallas, because of angles. Because at seven kilometers, the arcs are flatter, because the shells don't have so far, far to go, so the guns don't have to elevate so high. So the flatter arcs means that more shells are going to hit the side of the ship, where they don't really penetrate, IFAG or not, because even with IFAG, a Worcester 150 millimeter high explosive cannot get through 300 millimeters of armor plating. So it doesn't matter for the Worcester from seven kilometers, because most of the time it's either going to hit the deck or superstructure where it will penetrate, IFHE or not, and HE can't over penetrate, or it's going to hit the belt where IFHE or not, it can't get through. The Dallas, on the other hand, actually has lower penetration than the Worcester. Lower shell weight, lower muzzle velocity, I don't know the exact values, but 
the Dallas gets into a situation where her, I, where her HE shells can't get through some parts of the ship that the Woosters can. Like, I don't know, maybe this bow and stern section, depending on how thick the armor is actually modeled there. Maybe parts of the deck, maybe the, uh, the thicker parts of 64 millimeters on the, uh, on the South Carolina's deck are actually capable of defeating, as much as possible, a Dallas HE 150mm shell, such that the shell doesn't penetrate and explodes on the surface and only does half damage. That's why the Dallas is benefiting from the IFHE skill at the 7km range because it allows her to get, and it's going to be the same at long range, it allows her to get some full penetrations where she otherwise would only be getting semi-penetrations at the thinly armored parts of the ship. And that's why it doesn't affect the Wooster at all, because the Wooster can already penetrate all the thinly armored parts of the ship, and with the IFHG cannot penetrate all the thickly armored parts of the ship. So what does that mean in conclusion? Does that mean IFHE is useless for the Wooster? Not necessarily, because uh, what we really need to look at is to pit a Wooster against something that she's actually going to be uh, that she's actually going to be facing, and uh, then it comes very much down to it depends, because then it will depend if at the range that we're having the Wooster is capable without AFHG, of penetrating the superstructure of, say, a Yamato, or a Grosser Kurfürst, or a Montana. If she can, at long range, could reliably penetrate the superstructure and, de uh, and maybe deck armor of these ships, then it's not going to make a difference. If she can't, and we're at this kind of borderline area, this gray area, where an improved penetration actually makes sense, we might see a similar boost as what we're seeing uh, with the Dallas in somewhere maybe around 8% increased average damage. So that's an experiment for another day because I'm actually going to have to figure out how to organize that <laughs> and I have precious little time as you all know so uh, fi finding finding some time to get to organize that with somebody get into training rooms and get the get the data out is going to be challenging. I might be looking into that in October when I have when I'll be on leave and I actually have some more time to organize these sort of things. But yeah, until then, that's your, dis that's your explanation for these really, really puzzling results in the first video. And I think hopefully this gave you a bit of an idea in general how shells, penetration, armor, angles and all these kind of things work and uh, depth perception. So that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.